Good afternoon. This is Universal News Media. Today is March 24th, 2018. Today we will be viewing images from unedited photos obtained over the past couple days from the Federal Aviation Weather Cams scattered across Alaska and Canada. All videos are in time-lapse mode with each frame equal to 10 minutes. Many days the weather cams pick up images such as this one captured on March 19th by the Southwest Facing Weather Cam in Good News Bay, Alaska. These images of semi-transparent disks are a common sight. They are nothing more than reflections. These cameras from around Alaska and Canada show these same reflections day after day with the same shape, same texture, and same markings on them. In Chickaloon, Alaska, we see the same thing, only these round disk reflections are not as bright, and in just one frame, 10 minutes, the camera goes from the semi-transparent disks to this perfectly clear scene of mountains and sky. Thus, we know that the camera is not being covered in ice, snow, rain, or fog. We see these same glassy looking disks from the Dutch Ballyhoo weather cam and also from the Akiok weather cam in Alaska. In most of these videos, these disks appear to be slowly rotating together as if all connected in a cluster. This image from the Shagaluk Alaska camera shows the background landscape behind these transparent disks as if looking through a window. In all of these cameras, these semi-transparent disk reflections all have the same shape, same bend, and the same texture. This close-up view from two days ago on the Akiok Alaska camera shows a rim around the edge of each semi-transparent disk. We know these are the same semi-transparent disks showing up in all of these different cameras throughout Alaska and Canada because some of the disks have unique markings on them, such as this one from Good News Bay, Alaska, compared with the same markings from the camera in Akiok, Alaska. All of these reflections of disks have a rim around the perimeter and are slightly concave. Is it a coincidence that so many different cameras show the same semi-transparent concave disks with rims around the perimeter, similar texture and markings? No, it is not a coincidence. These cameras are all displaying the same semi-transparent concave disks. Now the question is, where are these disks? The disks are showing up in these cameras Actually, they're reflections of disks. And these reflections are all seem to be connected to a sun simulator system, which is a very intense light source installed between the Earth and the sun, much closer to the Earth. In this video, the sun is currently behind a helium gas cloud. To see this helium gas cloud in detail, please watch yesterday's video, March 23rd. The sun simulator is in front of it tracking in perfect synchronization with the sun. The gas cloud texture is not visible from this perspective, plus it is being masked by the atmospheric chemicals that are being sprayed daily by jets. Thus, the only light visible in this video is the sun simulator light, which is much weaker than our sun and with an actual physical diameter of several yards. This is why we don't see a yellow sun anymore. It's white, unlike the yellow sun of yesteryear. When the sun simulator goes behind a small street light, it completely disappears. And when the sun simulator goes behind a tiny bird feeder post, it disappears here in this video, taken from the, the east-facing weather cam in Prince Rupert, British Columbia, Canada. Try to ignore the vertical line through the sun. This is a common lens flare among the Canadian weather cams. As the sun simulator goes behind the tiny bird feeder post, it completely disappears. Our real sun could never be hidden behind an object that tiny, as evidenced by this video from the southeast facing weather cam located in Portage Glacier, Alaska. The sun goes behind a post, but it cannot be hidden by something so small. 
It was necessary to show a little bit of how the sun simulator works in the absence of our real sun so that we can explain these semi-transparent concave rimmed reflections that keep showing up in several weather cams. NASA coined the phrase sun simulator when they applied for the US patent for building it several years ago and to our knowledge it's been in place for around maybe four to six years. The sun simulator has sets of very large lenses surrounding it called a lens array. The primary function of this lens array is to bend light somewhat like a prism and to obscure objects in the sky between the earth and the sun so that they cannot be viewed by the public. No one is better at explaining the lens array than Jeff P., who has studied this equipment in depth for quite some time. He has incredible drawings and diagrams of how the sun simulator is built and how the lens array works with it. I have put Jeff P.'s links below so that you can listen to him explain the lens array, what it looks like, and how it works. It's really fascinating and well worth the time spent learning about what's in the sky above us. The lens array that we have just touched on is for obscuring objects which are part of an approaching celestial system. Many people ask when the system will make its closest pass to our Earth. A general indication of time is provided in the following screens of text. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe.